Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial series. In this series, I'm going to be talking about Fast API. Fast API is a relatively new Python framework that enables you to rapidly develop an API or backend for your web or mobile application. If you've developed web applications in Python before, you've probably used something like Flask or Django. Now these frameworks are great and have been around more than a decade and will more than meet your needs, but you may be looking for something new. I've recently been tasked with creating a new backend for a new project and I wanted to see what's out there these days to use besides Flask and Django. And I recently discovered Fast API. And after reviewing the documentation and building a sample application with Fast API, I came away very impressed. The project seems, even though it hasn't been around that long, it seems very mature. The documentation is great. It has a lot of powerful features, and it seems a little bit easier to me to set up a nice, nicely structured API using Fast API. So I thought I would check it out. And also, since I haven't seen a lot of videos or screencasts and tutorials out there on the web for Fast API, I thought I'd contribute something back to the community for this framework and see if we can increase the adoption of Fast API. Since the main focus of this channel so far has been on building financial utilities and applications, I thought we'd build a web based stock screener as an example application that uses Fast API. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration of the final application that we'll be building. We're going to be building a web-based stock screener. So I can click this add symbols button and just add a bunch of ticker symbols. So let's say I choose Apple, Microsoft, Corning, and Procter and Gamble. I can click the add symbols button and we're going to have fast API launch a background task that scrapes data from Yahoo finance and pulls in the key statistics for each of these ticker symbols. And so now you can see in a table, I'm displaying the last closing price, forward profit to earnings ratio, EPS, dividend yield, and the 50 and 200 day moving averages for each of these stock tickers. We've added all the symbols to a SQLite database and also uh, retrieved information from Yahoo Finance and updated all those records with key statistics. We also will allow you to query the database. So we can, for instance, enter 10, for the forward PE and click filter and it'll show us all of the tickers in our database that have a forward profit to earnings ratio of less than 10. We do the same with dividend yield, all the stocks that have a dividend yield greater than 2%. And then we can also show, for instance, stocks above the 50 day or 200 day moving average. So you can see Microsoft has held up relatively well considering how far the market is down. And we can add as many ticker symbols as, as we want. If you go to our GitHub repository at github.com slash finance hacks, we do have data sets. So if you wanted to add all the stocks in the S&P 500, um, you can go in data sets here. And I've already provided a data set of all the ticker symbol, symbols in the S&P 500 if you want to load all of these. And so SP500 tickers has all of those symbols. And you can basically build as large of a stock database as you want. Um, you can determine other key statistics that you want to track and filter on and build whatever you need. Um, this tutorial series will give you all the tools you need to be able to do that. And if you don't want to follow along um, directly, you can look in the repository. I've already committed the code for Stock Screener, and you can check out this code here and just get a head start. But I'm going to, in this series, I'm going to be building everything from the ground up, starting with an empty notepad. Um, but this is the final pro product, and I'm going to walk you through all these steps from stubbing out the endpoints, mocking up the UI, designing the database, uh, adding some real endpoints, and then wiring up the home screen and the modal and the filters and the UI uh, to query our database. So feel free to follow along. Um, now back to Fast API. Before I get started building uh, this application, uh, I'm going to show you a few of the features I like specifically about Fast API. Uh, the first thing that Fast API has that I like is it uses uh, this pedantic, which allows you to define these schemas for auto validation. So whatever requests come in, it can automatically validate uh, that that request has certain uh, values and certain attributes. So if someone posts some JSON to your API, you can define a schema like this, like item. And so you can define this model and say, oh, that, uh, that payload needs to have a name that's a string, a description, a price, and a tax, right? And so if you do that um, and define all of these schemas, then you know all of the data that gets to your API is, is good. 
and it's validated for you automatically. So in this create item function, you can see I can specify a data type. So the request that comes in needs to be of type item and needs to have all of these attributes. The second thing I like is that FastAPI is built on some open standards like JSON schema and OpenAPI. And so you get this nice automatically generated API documentation. So this stock screener that I built, I just built my application like I would normally, but now I get this URL slash docs, and you see I have an automatically generated uh, API docs here. So if I want to show the post endpoint for adding a stock, I can experiment with my API from a, a UI on the web that's generated for me. And then I know this uh, needs a payload with a symbol of string. So it knows all this information because I've defined um, this signature on my function and say it said I need a certain type, which is uh, a symbol and it has to be a string. And I can even uh, use this API fr directly from the web and send it JSON and see what the response looks like. Flask and Django can provide this functionality if you install some additional libraries and dependencies. But a nice thing about Fast API is that a lot of this stuff is well thought out for you and you don't have to go around searching for the right uh, libraries to integrate with your web framework. Uh, you get this out of the box. Another feature of Fast API that I like so far is dependency injection. So if you've used frameworks like Flask, you need to bootstrap an application and import all of these different functions and libraries and blueprints. Um, and the structure can be actually a little confusing and you can often run into weird like circular dependency issues. But Fast API uh, seems to have had a, a well thought out solution to this out of the box. And so if you look at some of the examples under dependency injection, um, you can see that you can specify a route which maps to a function and you can say this function depends on some other function that runs first. So I'm saying commons depends on common parameters, which will execute this function and uh, do a little bit of work in advance. And you can use this for other things like uh, getting a database connection in advance or making sure the user is authenticated. So running some authentication logic uh, before you get to the core uh, functionality of uh, this route. Another feature of Fast API I like is background tasks. If you'll notice earlier in the example application that I demoed, I added a number of symbols using this modal. I clicked add symbols and I got an instant response. Now I got that instant response, even though in the background, it fetched a lot of information from Yahoo Finance. It went through each of the symbols, found the profit to earnings ratio, EPS, et cetera, et cetera. And it also had to update the database with all of that information. Nonetheless, I didn't block the UI. I gave the user some instant feedback and uh, was able to perform those tasks without really interrupting the flow. So what enables that is uh, the background tasks here. So in any function, I can also say background tasks uh, of type background tasks, and then I can add a new task and give it a function to run in the background. So this example, um, they add a task to uh, write some information to a log file. In addition to these features, Fast API also has a ton of other advanced features that you may use, including WebSockets, GraphQL, JSON Web Tokens, support for any database libraries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm not going to go over every feature that Fast API has, but I will mention that Fast API has a lot of out-of-the-box functionality because it's built on top of another framework called Starlet. So Starlet is an application framework that was created by the author of the Django REST framework. And so it has a lot of features already, and it's ba based on a lot of experience on building uh, REST APIs using the Django REST framework. So a lot of this stuff is already re really well thought out. Um, so you can see Starlet here already had support for WebSockets, GraphQL, um, testing, a lot of other functionality that you can dive into later. And the final thing I want to mention that I like about Fast API is how easy it is to learn. I was familiar with Flask already, and so learning Fast API has been super easy so far. And to prove that, I'll show you the hello world example real quick before we get started with a larger application. So I'm going to go to the home page and a few lines of code here I'll put up. And so I'm going to go to a, a new text editor and main.py is what we're call, calling it. Um, if you import Fast API after installing it, so you install it with pip3 install fast API. And if you install it, and you also install the web server called Uvicorn, it'll install that. And you can see all you got to do is import fast API, you create a new instance of fast API for your app, and you can map a route to a function just like Flask. 
So I say uh, get slash, and then I just return a JSON response. So all I'll do here is run the application. So I do Ubicorn main app reload. And if I do that, we have a running API. And so I can do localhost 8000 and it returns hello world. And then also you can see where you can define specific parameters. So if I pass in an item ID, so I'm defining a new route called items. And if I do items three, we have it echo back the results. So it returns the item ID that's passed in. This also demonstrates how you can access the query string in the URL. So if I go to slash items, and then I do item five, and then I do question Q equals ABC, you can see it picks up this named, uh, named query parameter and we can do whatever we want with it in the function. This is just displaying it back to the user. So you can see in about 30 seconds, we're able to get an API up and running using fast API. We're able to accept a couple of simple requests and return some JSON to the user. So stay tuned for the next videos in the series. And I'm going to go ahead and build out this stock screener application using fast API. And in the process, we're going to demonstrate um, all these features and how they come together. So thanks a lot and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.